Hey guys, it's Chris. I come again with a new tutorial. As you saw in the intro of the video, today we will build an LED cube based on the RP2040 microcontroller offered by Raspberry Pi Foundation, so let's get started. As I mentioned, the RP2040 is the heart of our controlling side and these RGB LEDs are the main glowing items of the cube. We will use the WS28 RGB family type due to its compact size, ease of use, and large-scale controlling capability since our cube has a 125 LEDs. First things first, we must learn how to set the appropriate circuit diagram for the RP2040 MCU and to do so, I checked the Raspberry Pi documentation where I found a section for those who are willing to start designing using RP2040. The document provided by Raspberry Pi Foundation include a recommended circuit setup with the appropriate parts references. I move it to Atom Designer where I search it for the needed components through the online library. You can find all the parts that you need, so basically you will not add any part from external sources. I arranged each block setup in a separate rectangle to make a clear view for my schematic. You can notice that I followed the recommended setup, especially for the decoupling capacitors I recommend that you don't ignore these capacitors to avoid any surprises when you make your own design. The same for the crystal setup, I faced some issues with one of my designs where I didn't place it this 1K ohm series resistor to balance the ASR of my crystal. So I highly recommend that you check the datasheet of your used crystal to define the appropriate ASR and prevent the crystal from being overdriven. Maybe this MCU is a bit different comparing to the classic AVR ones that we use it to deal with and it needs an external memory chip where we upload the program code so I use it this QSPI memory chip for this purpose. The MCU power supply also has to be dropped to 3.3 volt and this is the purpose of this voltage regulator out here. I'm using USB-C for programming port and this is its setup. I then put 25 pieces of the WS2812 LEDs in a separate sheet and connected them in series alongside with these 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitors. Moving to the PCB design, I placed all parts inside this compact size area to keep the cube as small as possible. You can notice that I placed the LEDs on the bottom side of the PCB and the remaining components on the top side of it. I gave access to the power pins, VDD and VSS through the board edges and gave access to data in and out of the LEDs and this way we can join the Q pieces together the easy way. After getting the Gerber files of my design, I moved it to JLC PCB and ordered my cube pieces. Since we need 6 pieces, then the order has to contain a quantity of 10. I set the purple color for the very first time from this manufacturer. Just 6 days later, I got the parcel on my desktop and my PCB is very well packaged and delivered. The purple color also awesomely turned out. I also ordered the stencil of this design to help me assembling the cube parts. I set my desktop for action. Now it's time to assemble. I used a hot plate for the first piece where I soldered the MCU and its nearby components. And for this specific piece, I assembled the LEDs on the bottom side by hand. For the other 5 pieces, I used the second part of the stencil and I assembled them through the hot plate.
The pieces are ready, now we complete the software part before getting to assemble the cube. I move it to Arduino IDE for this purpose. Yes, the good part of the RP2040 is that you can program it through Arduino IDE. I imported library for WS28 RGB LEDs and create some light animations. You can download the code example from the link provided in the video description. I added the RP2040 board through the board's manager and then I connected the board through USB and uploaded my code. For the very first programming time, you will not see the board connected to the USB port but just click on upload and it will accept the code and appear on the ports list. After uploading the program, I designed this cube shape to assist me with the assembly of the cube pieces. Now our cube is ready and all what we need is a good stand so here I made a cool design for the cube stand and I 3D printed it and then I placed a power jack connector and power switch for on and off control. About the power supply I noticed that the LEDs drop up to 1.3 amps when it runs in full brightness. So make sure the power adapter that you use could provide 5 volt DC and 2 amps. Everything looks ready, now let's make it glow. That's it for today guys, do not miss to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more electronics videos. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.